All right, well, earlier today, I found uh, a video, and I started watching this video, and um, I know that the guy that made this video was against what was said in this video, and I caught on to it. Now, I, I, I understand that if somebody doesn't like what I say in this video, they're probably going to stop this video right off the get-go. I just wanted to point something out. Um, that this guy made a video and talking about how someone was either going to hell or in hell because I don't know if the guy is still alive, the person that... Um, was talking in the video. I mean, I've, I've seen the guy in videos before out here, and uh, evidently a lot of people like him, but he made a comment that this guy didn't like. So, first off, before I bring up what was said and who it was, I was going to sit here and bring up what this guy said another person said in the comment section and I didn't understand why this guy made a comment and see if you catch on I mean all I'm trying to do is point something out and see if you catch on to this so of course like I said the guy that made the video said whoever this was was either in hell or going to hell because like I said I don't know if he's alive or not anymore um, I could google it before I even made this video it didn't cross my mind till just now so um, this guy in the comment section says well this guy must be a Calvinist for what he said and I'm like no that sounds like the complete opposite because I knew that Calvinists are the ones that believe in easy believism and um, that you don't have to do anything for your salvation at all. So what I did was I googled what a Calvinist believes and this is what their salvation is right here is what they believe. Now it may not be exactly the way you think of it if you're a Calvinist but I know a Calvinist is a once saved, always saved believer. So what I did is um, when I Googled, do Calvinists believe in once saved? Um, you know how it has like a little arrow and then it has like another arrow because it says, you know, it gives you something and then you can tap on it and it'll give you like a uh, something and then you can tap on the one below it and it'll give you something. This is on your cell phone. I don't know how it is on the computer. It's been a while since I've been on the computer and used it. So this is what it says. Salvation plays out in three stages. Now, this isn't how I've heard people say it, but th at the end of the day, people that believe in once saved, this is what they're basically saying. The knowledge of sinfulness. Now I understand why people say, I'm a sinner in need of a savior because you just admitted that you're a sinner. Okay. That's all fine and dandy. Acknowledgement of Christ as the only source of freedom. Well, I know everybody talks about putting your faith and trust, which you didn't have to be a Calvinist to sit here and say, put your faith and trust in Christ. And then the third one was in Christian maturity of resting in Christ. Well, that sounds all nice and good. Now, I understand that that doesn't sound like what I've heard normal Baptists say. But at the end of the day, not Baptists, once saved. Because not every Baptist believes in once saved. I mean, you can think they all do, but not all of them do. So, I'm, I'm listening to that. And then I go and I, now I'm going to tell you who the person was that was in the video that was talking. 
It was R.C. Sproul's. Now, I don't know if he's alive. I don't know if he's dead. I mean, I really don't. I've seen a lot of videos of him, and normally they look like an older video. So he may not even be alive no more. But what did he say that made this guy mad that made the video in the first place? And that everybody else in the comments section for this guy's video, because he believes in once saved, what did R.C. Sproles say in this video that ticked the guy off that made the video and then made everybody comment on it that Christ asked people to repent so I know where R.C. Sproles was going with this that he was basically making a comment that as a, as a, as a believing Christian that you are supposed to repent that's what he was saying now, why did it make the guy mad that made the video and then say that R.C. Sproles is either in hell or going to hell? And then the, the person that commented said, well, this guy is a Calvinist. And I'm sitting here going, no, no. Calvinists are the ones that believe in the easy believism because I even witnessed another person comment in the comment section where he says that he has people that talk to him and get on to him because he believe that he people say that this guy believes in easy believism or the cheap grace. Well, here's the deal. At the end of the day, I mean, this may not sound like what once saved always saved believers say. I'm still trying to figure out why that why it talks about being a doer of the word. Let me, I mean, I'm just trying to, you know, maybe, maybe I can open up the comment section because, you know, somebody, I, the other day I brought up repentance to someone. And do you know what they said repentance was? Which is not even close. Not even close that repentance is turning from unbelief to belief. Again, like I said, I just heard on the radio earlier where this person said that the, um, that the Jewish people back in before Jesus, you know, coming down and dying on the cross in the, in the Old Testament were unbelievers, okay? Did they witness the hand of God? I mean, I'm just trying to point this out. Didn't they witness what God did for them? Now, why were they considered unbelievers? I'm going to say it again. Because they were disobedient. So, again, I'm, I mean, I'm trying to point this out so maybe, like I said, maybe it'll click in somebody's head that, again, if God never changed, your dispensations of grace that everybody wants to talk about did not change everything about man to what God thought about man. This dispensation of grace, because that's just another excuse that once saved, always saved believers say, as if it's a whole different thing. As if today is a whole different thing as back then. But who was the one that I've always heard say that God never changed? You know, I never heard this at church as a child. I never heard it. I mean, I'm talking about, let me see, when did I first go to church? I mean, I know I was going to church 13, 14, 15, 13, 14, when I moved back in with my grandparents. Um, I never heard this saying that God never changed. I mean, I'm trying to point this out, man. I mean, I'm telling you, I've heard it coming from people's mouths of everyone. I've never heard no one sit here and say that God has changed to the point where that it, what he expects is the same. So if God never changed, and you can see even in the New Testament that God is against the same things that God was against in the Old Testament, then tell me how that a person can do what they want to do 
sit here and say that 1 Corinthians 6, 9, Galatians and Ephesians. I mean, have you heard the excuse that people use for 1 Corinthians 6, 9? And if you think I heard it from one, no, I didn't. I heard it from three or four people as if, because before that, before 1 Corinthians 6, 9, they're talking about a law, like taking your brother or sister or something like that to court. I've literally heard multiple people use 1 Corinthians 6, 9 as if it's referring to a whole different thing. It, it was not referring to taking your brother or sister to court. I don't care what the Bible said before that. Paul was making a, an outright statement, just like he did in Galatians and Ephesians, and they weren't talking about a law and taking your brother and sister to court there. Now, why these people out here have literally used this as if these scriptures are totally irrelevant to a believing Christian. They're not totally irrelevant. You know, isn't it weird? Let me tell you this. I witnessed, I, I, I had a bad day for a long time today. I mean, a bad day. So I start watching this guy's video and everything completely changed. I mean, everything changed. I, this guy makes such good videos. I can't think of his name because I've watched a few of his videos and I, I've, I've never even subscribed to the guy. And I really need to because, you know, the, but the, the problem is, do you know what I mentioned to him? That if, since he knows the truth, if he went around telling everybody that if you weren't this way, that you're, you're not right with God, like I do, he wouldn't have followers either. You know, a lot of people out here that make videos that I witness that don't believe in once saved, they don't go around doing like me. That's the, I mean, I they don't. They don't sit here all day long and make videos telling people where they're wrong, they're wrong, they're wrong, they're wrong, they're wrong. It's like when I watch a lot of, when I watch a lot of messages out here, I witness how people, like a lot of Christians that make the videos have the uh, have the videos out here that people are watching what they sit here and say everybody likes it doesn't make a difference what kind of christian you are out here you could be a seven day adventist and you like it and, and and it's all good it's all good if you're if they're talking the truth but you don't ever hear them talking about certain things, against certain things. I mean, just like when I was on TikTok, I was watching videos and everybody was loving what these people said. And as soon as I said, and I talked against once saved, then I got hounded on the person by the person that made the video. I was wrong. I'm gonna tell you this right now. You know that Dr. Awe, do you guys know who I'm talking about out here? Has like a, has like, puppets and stuff or acts I mean he acts weird in his videos but I mean they're not bad videos the only thing about it is when I talked against once saved you ought to saw how he talked to me when I talked against once saved I don't need nobody jumping my case just because I make a bold statement does not mean that I need anybody jumping my case and just because I sit here and I say the truth doesn't mean that everybody out here should actually hate me because I'm sitting here telling the truth either. I mean, I, I really wish I was like everybody else. I mean, I, I mean, not, not, not lying, not leading people astray. I mean, if I'm going to tell you right now, the majority of the church, the majority of Christians, whether they're on YouTube or on TikTok, the majority of people are still leading people astray. They still don't even believe that you're, that you're being saved. Okay, here I'm gonna I'm gonna do it again just so you think that that I'm uh, that if you think that I'm full of crap because I'm not such a good Bible reader and I'm not such a good prayer and I don't and I'm not a big faster and I'm, I'm, I'm not all these things that a lot of people out here do and it doesn't make no difference because if you're not right with God it doesn't make a difference you can pray all day long it's going in one ear out the other I'm gonna tell you that right now you can fast all day long, and at the end of the day, most people are going to have a delusion thinking they're right with God, but they're not believing in the truth. You see all the stuff in the Bible that talks against people that don't like the truth.
It'd be smarter to sit here and read the Bible for yourself and forget anything you ever heard in your entire life and learn for yourself. But nobody will do that. Nobody, I mean, almost nobody even can do it. Nobody can sit here and forget anything that they've ever heard. Anything. And quit boasting these certain scriptures out up like they're like they're the most important scripture ever created in the Word of God. You are you are you really kidding me that we're saved by grace through faith is the most important scripture out there? I mean, for years it was John three sixteen, and I can see through both of them scriptures because I'm gonna tell you this right now: a person that had true God's grace is gonna know that when the time comes, they're gonna know how to deny all ungodliness and worldly lust. And most people, all they do is twist God's word. All they do is twist God's word. Well, Paul, Paul this, Paul, Paul said this. Again, most people are not even like Paul. They don't want to hear that you have to crucify the flesh. They don't want to hear that you have to do anything. That's why once saved, I've already seen it. When I kept on looking up uh, uh, Calvinism, after I saw that, what else did it sit here and say? Um, faith alone. Does it say in the Bible that we're saved by faith alone? Oh, but when people sit here and talk against faith alone, then they then they bring up Christ alone. It, it, it doesn't say that we're saved by faith alone at all in the Bible. As a matter of fact, it says the opposite. So even though you bring up Jesus Christ in the in the equation, no, you're not saved by faith alone through Christ alone. No, you're not. Because if you were saved by faith alone through Christ alone, it wouldn't sit here and say that you're not saved by faith alone. I mean, it, it's not making sense, man. This is the garbage that, 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 that people out here believe. I mean, I, I'm not the only one that caught on that we're not saved by faith alone because a lot of people have went right there to that scripture that says we're not saved by faith alone and they've made videos about it. I mean, I'm sorry that my videos are like this, that I keep on pointing things out. If you're not a doer of the word, okay, what's a doer of the word? Crucify the flesh, deny self, fight the temptation of sin, uh, forsake your ways. Don't hang around sinners. Tells you four or five places in the Bible you're not supposed to hang around with a sinner. Because, and just like, hey, here's something, to, here's something to top it off. Now, everybody today all talks about the King James Version. Do you realize that? Do you realize that the biggest Bible that was used by Baptists for years. You know, since Baptists are normally your once saved believers, do you know what Bible they used for years after years after years after years after years? Go ahead and name it. It wasn't the King James. It was the NIV version. That's right. Now, any of y'all that have been around just for a few years, all you hear is the King James. Go do some investigating and find out what most Baptists used to use at one time. They used the NIV version. Okay? So if they used the NIV, and then I borrowed my friend's NIV one day, and when I finally found, when I found one of them scriptures that talked about how we're not supposed to hang around sinners, what did it say in, this, in the study section? Because you would go back to your ways. So why was the study section of that Bible telling you that God was telling us not to hang around with sinners because we would go back to our ways, but this is the Bible that most Baptists and once saved, always saved believers used before they went to the, you know, to the King James Version like everybody else is today. I'm not stupid. I wasn't born yesterday, man. I've witnessed all this stuff. So why would this Bible sit here and say that in the study section that they didn't want, that God didn't basically, from what that scripture was saying, did not want people to go back to their wicked, their ways. Don't, excuse me. It didn't use the word wicked. It did not use the word wicked. But if you went back to your ways and you're wicked one, once before because you were evil, evil in the wound, evil at youth, if you, what you were doing all your life, you were evil until you came to the Lord. You're still doing those things. You're still considered evil. 
that would make you wicked. And not only would it make you wicked, it'd make you unrighteous. Not only make you unrighteous, it'd make you ungodly. So all I got to do is believe and I can still go do those things? Does the Bible actually say that? Does, it, does the Bible actually say past, present, and future? There's another lie right there. And I'm sorry that I have to bring this up again, but Jesus did not take the law away at the cross. Uh, 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 uh. You guys don't bring it up no more, do you? Because most people deny it, don't they? I mean, if you're, if you're, if you don't lie, if you're telling me I'm wrong, t tell me wh wh where did the, where did you, where did the law go away again? I, I bring it up because I want people to know the truth. How did the law go away? Christ paved the way for the law to be taken away. I mean, you guys have read the Bible. Everybody out here that wants to sit here and make it seem like they're, they're know-it-alls today, where does it tell you that the law was taken away? Oh, when you were led by the Holy Spirit. But you weren't led by the Holy Spirit. I mean, Christ couldn't have taken the law away. It was once you were born again that you were no longer under the law. See, don't you understand? Don't you see this? And, and people out here have believed this? The same people. The same people that use grace as an excuse. That say, Paul, he struggled with the flesh. Hey, we're all going to struggle with the flesh. If I get tempted, that doesn't mean I give in. Just because Paul got tempted, he didn't give in. You guys can't prove it at all that Paul ever gave in. You can't prove, let me tell you this right now, you can't even prove in the Bible he gave in one time. I'm not going to say he didn't, but you can't even prove in the Bible that when Christ came into his life and manifested himself, you can't even prove that Paul gave in one time. Not nowhere in the entire Bible. You, what did this person sit here and say one day? Paul was a chief sinner. Whoa, 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 whoa. Was that after Christ or before Christ? Oh, you can't find it, can you? That's right, you can't find it. Again, Ephesians 2, 3. I sit here and said, just like that, just like, and I didn't even use other people. I didn't even use other people. All I used was Paul. He was no longer a child of wrath. Everyone out here is a child of wrath, a child of disobedience. Every one of us, until, until we are born again, led by the Holy Spirit, every one of us are a child of wrath and a child of disobedience. So if Paul was no longer a child of wrath, again, what are the two things that once saved, always saved, never bring up? What did Paul do? They never bring it up because you know it's something you have to do. Crucified the flesh and died to self daily. I point this out because this is the reason why he was no longer a child of wrath. And when you witness that he's not only talking about himself, he's talking about other people. And again, you go to 1 Corinthians six eleven. You know how he brings it up. This is what you were doing once before, but you're no longer doing it no more. Correct? People quit doing what they were doing that made themselves wrong with God. That's right. That is your will. That's the free will that you have to be obedient to God, to turn from your ways. And if you don't turn from your ways, there's no way that you can be covered under the blood of Christ because you're still in darkness. I get tempted, I'm supposed to deny it. And you think God will acknowledge that? Yes, he will. But if I get tempted and I give into it, do you think God's going to acknowledge that? Oh, yes, he will. Oh, he will acknowledge it very well. And the next time I get tempted and I give into it, what? he's really going to look at it real well. 
Yes, he will. Because if anybody knew Christ and knew God, they wouldn't be doing that. There you go. And there's absolutely not a one person out here that can tell me that I'm wrong with this message. And then, and then nobody's going to prove to me that there, there wasn't a person that had a changed heart because that's what God's wanting to do is, is, is to, to, is to get into your life where you have a changed heart. Correct. Since everybody talks about that, it's the heart that God's going to look at. Well, you're not a changed person out here being a fornicator. I mean, all that fornicating scriptures are all in the New Testament. I'm not going to sit here and say there's nothing in the Old Testament, but you're not going to sit here and prove to me that a fornicator is right with God at all. And then it tells you in 1 Corinthians and Ephesians and Galatians, they, they take their late, they, they do not make it into the kingdom. No, they don't. No, they don't. Just like, and, and I'm not being racist, just like there was a black guy. He said that, that he had a vision or a dream and that he didn't get raptured and he knew the reason why. Just like I know the reason why that if the rapture happened tomorrow and I didn't get raptured or if I went to hell, I would know exactly why I went to hell. Why did this guy not get raptured in his vision and dream? Because he was a fornicator. So, oh my goodness, evidently you didn't like that because you didn't, it didn't go your way, did it? It didn't go your way, so you didn't like it. How about the girl that said, I, w I witnessed two visions and dreams of a rapture. The first time I made it, the second time I didn't. Why didn't you make it the second time, sister? Well, I'll tell you exactly what she said. She said she had lust in her heart. And guess what? Somehow they knew it. Somehow, either God pointed it out to them in their visions and dreams, or they knew it down deep. And just like most people, they know down deep. I mean, it's all good when you sit here and you run across people out here that talk against sin. John MacArthur talks against sin. DTBM, a follower of John MacArthur at one time that studied under him, doesn't believe in sin, doesn't believe in being in sin. How about Paul Washer? He doesn't believe about being in sin. As a matter of fact, he'll talk 100 trillion percent against it. But again, all three of them would tell you that if a person isn't saved right now, they've never been saved and you don't know that person's heart. You may know them by their fruit, if they're actually living for God or not, but you cannot prove at all at one time or another if they were not right with God and they backslid, fell away, and went apostate. And neither can Paul Washer, neither can DTBM, neither can John MacArthur. I mean, it's unbelievable that, you know, before God had a problem with those people that were following Moses, God didn't probably have a problem with them for a, for a minute, did they? Did he? Did God have a problem with them the whole time? I mean, he, they led him out of Egypt, got them across the Red Sea. They went up to the mountain. If Moses goes up there, comes down, look at what they're doing. Before then, Moses probably would have not, not even had a problem with what they were doing. God, I can't really tell you. I can't answer that. I mean, I can answer that. I mean, <laughs> I'm going to tell you, you know, the 40, the, the wilderness and all these people dying, it's because they weren't doing what God asked. And I'm going to tell you this right now. I'm going to say it again. Why is this happening today? Why is it a direct parallel of what happened back then that's happening today? God let them die off. Some, some survived. Why? Why is this happening right now? Well, don't sit here and point fingers at the non-believers out here. I'm going to tell you that right now. Because if the church wasn't as much of a wreck as it is today, I think everything would still be going hunky-dory. But it's not going hunky-dory. 
because everybody wants to believe in this garbage everybody out here is preaching. I mean, think about this. I mean, all my life, all, everybody I've ever witnessed all my life, most people act like they didn't even know everything about the Bible. I mean, my grandmother, she probably knew a whole bunch, but I'm telling you, I don't care how many times you've read the Bible, you've never read the Bible as much as my grandmother. I'm not gonna say there's no, but there's not a person out here that hasn't, but I'm gonna tell you this right now, if you're 30, 40, 50, 60, 70, 80, you may if you're 80. <laughs> and I'm gonna tell you this right now, you can get mad all you want. My grandmother had sin licked, man. I've never seen anything like it. Out of all the years I knew her, I could sit here and say, I don't even think I could put on two hands. I, I don't even know I can, if I can fill in 10 fingers of how many times she's cussed. And if she cussed, it sure wasn't because of her, just because she just wanted to go around cussing like the majority of the world is. It would have been because of me and my grandpa. I'm going to tell you that right now. I'm not going to sit here and say that there, there hasn't been a person that's read the Bible as much. I'm going to tell you right now, I've never seen so many commentaries. I don't believe in commentaries, but if it's if that's what it takes for people to for people to witness everything and try to know as much as they possibly can, look at it from different angles, I myself are against commentaries. But, I mean, nobody's ever seen the Bible open up like it has in the last six years. But I'm going to tell you this right now. Don't think that just because the Bible's opening up, that everybody out here reading the Bible is out here understanding. The majority of people have gotten this stuff from listening to another individual. I mean, for years, like I was getting to a minute ago, the majority of people used to go around going, hey, could you tell me what this means? You had a pastor, you had a pastor that read, and you know what, that pastor got his message from another pastor. And now, what, because of this this internet dump? That you can get on and you can sit here and say, hey man, could you tell me what this means? Oh yes, I can tell you what it means. You think you want to listen to everybody out here? I'm, I'm going to tell you right now. I'm not going to, I am not going to give very many credit to people out here that know the truth. Like I said, that scripture, and I'm bringing it up because I know for a fact that that scripture where it says that these people do not know God, it's that scripture has nothing to do. That has to do with a person falling away from God because if anybody had any sense, and I'm talking smack when I sit here and say this, if anybody had any sense, they would never turn away from God. And you turn away from God by going back to your wicked ways. If anybody had any sense, like, like I should have never, I should have never went back into sin. I should have never. I mean, I, I, my salvation is on the is on the line here, man. There never was such a thing as once saved. To the end. Think about this. Why do people always say to the end? You know, normally when they say to the end, they mean as far as um, the rapture. A lot of people that are against the rapture, they make it sound like we're here to the end. Get out of here, fly. I've had I've had two I've had a fly in my truck all day long today, man. Um But I'm telling you that to the end is your salvation on the line. I mean, your your salvation is on the line. If you're not going to check yourself and to see if you're not watching what you should be doing out here, hope to be accounted worthy. Why would you have to hope to be accounted worthy? I don't know how many times I've said these type of things in my videos and I've never changed anything. I've never changed anything about anything. I've heard everything out here that people that once saved and other people out here preach, 
that, that uh, at the end of the day, I could sit here and talk about a lot of Catholics about how um, we're supposed to have them beads and beads or something. Well, you're supposed to do this and you're supposed to do that. I can see through all that garbage. That's nothing but traditions of men. I can see through once saved. All that is is a doctrines of demon. All that is is Satan somehow out here has gotten a man and has misled them. Satan is in the church. The majority of the churches out here is full of Satan. You get mad all you want. I remember a woman one day, she went to, she said that she went to about four or five, six churches in a row and she didn't even see the Holy Spirit in like every church before she found the one because evidently the things that people were doing, the things that they believed. Now, do you think that she, evidently she was going to all the wrong places? She saw y'all's churches out here. No different than the people out here that believe in prosperity gospel. You don't mind talking about prosperity gospel, do you? What if you went into a prosperity gospel church and you got caught up in it? What would you, I mean, you could, you could. I could. Anybody could get caught up in that garbage. But you don't mind putting down prosperity, do you? You don't mind sitting here saying, well, they're preaching stuff as if, as if, uh, man, I don't, I, I'm not going to go there. I've, I've witnessed enough of it. I used to watch Joel Olstein. My grandmother, the only reason why she watched Joel Olstein is because of the message of building someone up, but you don't build someone up so much as if they get off track. My grandmother watched other videos, other shows on Sunday on TV, and they were good shows. I never, I, I never heard, uh, what's that pastor that, that in Dallas that is a uh, Baptist pastor? What's his name? The one that was with Donald Trump. Um, what is his name? Um, he never preached once saved. He never preached once saved. If you'll notice, if you'll notice all these pastors out here that believe you can't lose salvation, they never preach once saved on TV. I've never witnessed it, not one time. I'm not going to say there ain't one person out here, but I've never heard it at all. I sit here, uh, oh man. I mean, why in the heck would God deliver people of sin and and not expect that you should be delivered also? That's what doesn't make sense. I mean, I have literally, I remember my grandmother was going to a church in Oklahoma City and I can't, I couldn't stand it because every time I went, this pastor always talked about what, how his past was. Every time and I'm sitting here thinking, I don't want to hear about that. I mean, it how how he was a drunk, a druggie, a woman abuser, and all these things, and God delivered him from them. And I didn't want to hear that. But why aren't Christians out here talking about how God delivers them? Instead of making excuses for their sins so they can remain in sin. I wasn't wrong when I sit here and said I witnessed a woman the other day on TikTok that had a great, great message. She, and I already knew it. I'm not wrong when I sit here and say I already knew it. If you humble yourself, you know, come down to the level that God wants us to be, then you will see mighty things work through you. If you want to be full of pride and in sin, you won't see mighty works. I'm going to tell you right now, the majority of people out here are, are straight up under a delusion. Straight up think that they've got the Holy Spirit and they've got nothing more than a fake spirit. So here I am telling you the truth. 
that this woman sit here and said that if you surrender your life, does th let me ask you, do you think instantaneously I say, hey, God, I'm a sinner and I'm in need of a savior? Does that automatically mean that I'm going to I'm willing to humble myself and that I'm willing to learn God to change? Not necessarily. Because why aren't every Christian out here changing? Instead of being the same person. No Christian goes around cheating on your spouse. No Christian at all even goes around looking for sex all the time. No Christian at all gets drunk. No Christian at all gets high. <laughs> I admit my problems. No Christian at all goes around getting mad, goes off the air like me. You not witness, do you not know that I've witnessed scriptures? I'm going to tell you this right now. I started out my morning in Sydney, Sydney, Nebraska. I'm listening to the radio and I hear a pastor. He has a message. Do you know this message that I heard this morning? This isn't the first time. I mean, I've opened up the Bible and witnessed scriptures and I'm going, there's me. There's me right there. I witnessed the scripture the other day about self-control in the Bible. Do you know that, that, that scripture? I'm not going to say it was just talking to me, but how did I run across it? I heard that pastor this morning and I'm like, this message was for me. Unbelievable. Get out of here. And it's okay for everybody else just to do anything? Get mad and hate someone? Be a murderer because you hate someone? Go around and, and do whatever you want? You got the wrong message. You got the wrong God. You're serving the created, the, the, the creature, not the creator. I'm telling you this right now. You're looking for unrighteousness. That's the excuse. It sits there and says all these scriptures in the Bible. That's the double-mindedness. That's the Pharisee. Don't bring up the people trying to work themselves into heaven. Got him. Got him. Got him. Yes. Good night, Irene. I really don't even hate flies, man. If they don't pester me, I don't even care. I'm, I've, I've had a fit the last two days. You want me to tell you what I've done the last two days? Get out of here, fly. <laughs> When I need to clean my trailer out, there it is. Tried to blow them out of my truck. And I got one, rid of one yesterday. That one is bye-bye. And I'm telling you right now. Just like I can blame myself right now. And I'm not getting, I'm not asking anybody to feel sorry for me. But just like that I'm blaming myself, I'm blaming Christians out here. And I'm blaming non-believers. This is why it's coming to an end. That's why God's taking a spiritual protection hedge off this world. And you're going to see everything from what happened in the Old Testament days happen real soon at a parallel. Because everybody wants to be wicked. They chose wickedness. That's why. 
tell you right now, God held all this back. Slowly but surely, he started letting things happen. You think this, you think these, these days of prayer really meant something? If people weren't even right with God, I'm out there praying. It's a day of prayer. Ooh, but a day of prayer. You really think it meant anything when people weren't even, when those people were, were believing in falsehoods? How much do you think? I mean, let me tell you this. If there was going to be a, what is that called? What is it called? Come on. Come on, Jeff. What's it called? People think it's going to happen in the future, and I know it's not going to happen. It's never going to happen. This world was never going to get better, and this guy sit here and said it in a video. He said, this world is going to do nothing but get worse, and I've heard more people say that. What's that thing that gets a lot of people that ain't, that are not a God, that come to God? What's that, a big group of people? That was never going to happen, and I'm going to tell you right now, if all they were going to do is listen to people preach their falsehoods, they were never going to get the truth. So what would it make a revival? What was it going to make a difference to ever have a revival when everybody was going to hear the wrong message? All you got to do is believe. Put your faith and trust in Christ. Believe Jesus died, rose, went back to be at the right hand side of the Father. And then be in sin and be of your father the devil. That really works. I don't think so. Well, I'm done with the video. Uh, yeah, it doesn't work. What people are saying and believing are two different things. They're contradicting each other. You can believe in the gospel. I'm going to say it again. And I'm not wrong about this. You can believe in the gospel all you want and think you're saved. And say you believe and believe and believe to your purple in the face. If you're in sin, you're of your father the devil. You're not serving the creator. You're, ser the cr you're serving the creature or whatever it says in the Bible. That's right. Like I said, when people started talking against repentance, that was a big mistake out here. That was a big mistake when she started talking against repentance, man. Yeah, that was a big, 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 big mistake when people started talking against repentance. Turning the truth into a lie that you have to repent, say you don't have to repent. Really? Okay, Jesus Christ? Well, somebody's a liar out here, and I know it wasn't Jesus. He's the word made. He's the truth. <laughs> I'm not even going to bring that up again. I'm not even going to sit here and say it's not that it saves you. It's whether you're saved or whether you're not. It's whether or, it's the, it doesn't save you. <laughs> Jeff, you already said it. Are you saved without it? No, you're not. Believe what you want. It's exactly how we're supposed to be. Deny self died as self forsake our ways crucify the flesh fight the temptation that's things that are required that's that's again being a doer of the word and if you're not going to do those things that you're going to be deceived because that's exactly what God asks us to do and I can guarantee you that's a part of his will for everyone out here that comes to him it isn't just believing in God and loving God with everything you have and loving your neighbor. Heck, if you don't even, if you hate somebody and you're a murderer, then you don't even love your neighbor. I see more of that. I mean, if, if, if I can guarantee you this right now, that when that person sit here and said, man, I've seen too many Christians get mad and talk smack to each other. Nope. Nope. Why even bring up them scriptures? Why bring up the... This is what I thought about the other day. Think about this for a moment. I'm going to say it again. And then I'm going to end this video. I looked up grieving the Holy Spirit a long time ago. I won't lie. But I never looked up. Where in the Bible does it talk about grieving the Holy Spirit? Right there in the book of Isaiah. If you grieve the Holy Spirit, God will be your enemy. 
no different than what it was back in the days of Isaiah. Now you're going to sit here and think, whoa, 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 whoa. You're going to start thinking. You're going to start saying stuff. Then don't talk about filthy rags because that's in the book of Isaiah too. That's right. If you're going to talk against grieving the Holy Spirit and God will be your enemy and say God never changed, don't talk about the filthy rags. Good weekend.